Welcome to Adventures in Grace. This is Jim Hockaday. Looking forward to another great video on what is Christianity. You say you said it's a great video. <laughs> I know I did. Not because I'm doing it, but because this information <clears throat> will just transform your life, folks. <sighs> the amount of people I've heard testify in these last years as we've written down some wonderful thoughts in What's Next, Papa, on this book right here, it's just going to really bless you and help you to go so much further with what we're sharing. People saying, I'm experiencing God in my life. It's so amazing. Well, it was always easy. And you know what? You know, I'm not a guru in this. I'm learning to experience him all the time too and just be aware of him. It certainly increases the tangibility of my alone time with the Lord where he's not so far, far away, but he's right here. And you can just stop for a moment, close your eyes and say, Lord, I can sense him immediately. Immediately I can sense him in my heart because he's that close. He did that for us so that we would have what the disciples had, times a bazillion as he lives inside of us and we take him everywhere we go at every moment and minute of the day. Oh, to get our eyes off the flesh and the world and let Jesus be so real. That's why we do Adventures in Grace. Number one, so that God could come out of the pages of your Bible and get into your life. Number two, God becoming real to you makes faith uh, actually be the real kind of faith in its proper place. Where God is real and what he says to you then comes from a place of his realness. So you're not trying to believe it. It's just automatic believe it. You just respond to what he says. And then number three, that you have testimonies to share and let people know how real God is. So we're going to jump right back into these wonderful places. As you can see, I have not moved. So I've done a few videos in the same place with the same outfit on. I told you I won't wear this for a real long time. But um, anyhow, let's get into Matthew eleven twenty-seven 27 to 30 in the Message Bible. Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and say. This is a unique father and son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the Father the way the Son does, nor the Son the way the Father does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Now, I went through that rather fast, but I was planning on stopping and just going back to the fact that we've talked about before, and it's actually the first chapter of the, the new book. But isn't it interesting how many times Jesus alluded to actually spending time with him? He didn't say, spend time with me through the word, spend time with me through worship, spend time with me through prayer, spend time with me through meditation. He just said, spend time with me. You mean God can be real where I could go on a walk and it's like I'm walking with somebody? He always has been. The idea that this is in any way new for somebody shows you what religion and tradition have done. I, I, I've shared this before. Religion is famous for taking God and removing him out of the equation. So what you're left with is information about him. But you don't know him. And Jesus wants you to get to know him. The other thing that he called life lived like everybody does is religion. Are you tired of religion? Burned out, worn out on religion? And then what did he say? That's just tough. That's the way it is. No, come to me. He didn't say, read two more chapters. Well, you're against reading. Well, obviously, of course not. Because in reading the things of Scripture, it enhances the opportunity for me to experience God in a greater measure. Praying only endears my heart to the spiritual world because the Holy Ghost begins to pray through me and I get to know him more. Meditation keeps my mind stayed on the Lord and great peace have those whose minds are stayed on him. You see, every facet of what we do contributes to the whole purpose, but what we do is not the purpose. The purpose, Christianity, is your time spent with him. 
Thank you for all that enthusiasm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, man, we're going to get right back into, uh, you know, the Message Bible. When you, when you copy and paste it, it gives you the scriptures, uh, Rome, uh, Matthew 6, 19 to 21, 24 to 34, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't actually show you which one you're on. So I don't know which one we're on, but we're going to go back to just the part here that says, there's far more to your life than the food you put into your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. I think he's trying to get into your business talking about the things that you actually have care for, anxiety about, or concern about, seeming to indicate that you can't love the world and the flesh and love God at the same time. To love one is to actually decrease your love for the other. So if we're going to be concerned about these things, that means we don't take God as our supplier. We think we have to get involved to help him out, which then would say we don't actually respect and honor his salvation, which is all inclusive. It's like going back up to the counter to pay for a piece of pie after your father or someone that was important to you went ahead and paid for all-inclusive a buffet. But you're going to go up and try to pay for the, for the pie. Well, no, that's already been included. So you, you making a demand that you can pay for the pie actually decreases the importance of the father uh, paying for your all-inclusive dinner. And this is what we do to the Lord all the time. And that's why we want to become acclimated to the spiritual world, just like here at 6,400 feet up in Castle Rock, Colorado, I had to become acclimated to the atmosphere, to the altitude. And now that I have, I can leave and go away for a week, come back, and I'm perfectly fine because I'm acclimated to it. But we need to acclimate to the things of heaven so they become our new reset. Amen? Our default setting on our computer on our computer. It is what? The default setting is always Jesus, always God. So all the things that he said so that we could actually spend time with him, that's where we need to be. So when Jesus starts talking here about all these things of the world that seem to trip everybody up, then he goes on and, and makes this amazing assertion. Look at the birds. We said this last time, but wow, this is such a good statement because Jesus is giving us something to look at in this world that we can see with our physical eyes that will bring about a correlation between what we see, how God functions with what we see as a teaching to how God functions with you. So what do you get out of this? What I see right there causes me to go, well, I trust him completely. Then I'm not about to fuss. I'm not about to worry about this one bit. In fact, I just push it aside. It's extra time that takes me away from my time to go have a walk with Jesus. Well, you can't take a walk right now. Look at all the emails you have to, oh, no, I can take a walk. I need a walk. Why? To get away from this stuff that, that weighs me down in this world so that I can experience God in his world. That's just so good. Because then he went on to say free and unfettered. In other words, the birds are free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. And you count far more to him than birds. But he doesn't stop there. Has anyone by fussing in front of a mirror even gotten taller by so much of an inch? This is a message Bible. All this time and money wasted on fashion. Do you think it makes that much difference? Look at what Jesus just said. All the time and money wasted on fashion. Does it really make that much difference? Can you really say yes? No, every one of us says, I see it. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Now, it doesn't mean Jesus wants you in sackcloth and ashes. He loves that you have something nice to wear. He doesn't mind that it's fashionable. It's just that it's become a Lord to you and it's caused Jesus to take second place. Well, he's just so arrogant. He just wants first place in everything. That has nothing to do with it. He's so loving and he's so kind. He's all encompassing, all seeing, and all powerful. And he has provided through Jesus Christ an avenue through which he can touch your life 24 7, bless you, live inside of you, and give you the greatest life anyone on the face of the earth could ever have. And with that life will come all the blessings you ever wanted but you won't be trying to have them at the expense of ignoring him. 
So spending time with him, getting away from the things that distract us are not because he's arrogant and because he just has to be, you know, this arrogant individual. So, so um, what, what do they call it? Narcissistic. And just, we've got to just follow him. He loves you and knows that if you'll turn your attention toward him, not only will you experience him, but in experiencing him, you'll never want to experience anything else. And while you're experiencing him, it gives him the freedom, the leeway to get in your life and tweak everything in there and make your life amazing. Like heal your body and you didn't even realize when it happened, but you're no longer in pain and things have straightened out. Like take care of your finances by giving you a way better job or just helping you to see how to readjust your budget. I mean, little simple things, and he'll tell you to give here and give there, and then the return shall be so great. But you're not thinking about a return, you're hanging out with him. And so many other areas that we could talk about, but God just wants to be your dad. So no, he's not wanting your attention because he's just so stuck on himself. He wants your attention so that you will give him first place where it becomes the faith that lets God be the God who can split seas, who can multiply bread, who can raise the dead, who can heal the sick. He can open the blind eye. He'll deliver you from whatever addiction that's been trying to hound you. Thank God he becomes the God of all things. All right, don't get me started. So here it says, instead of looking at the fashions, walk out into the fields and look at the wild. Now I'm looking at flowers. I mean, the last session we looked at birds and now I'm looking at flowers. And the answer is, look at anything that he has created because in what he has created. I'm not talking about a skyscraper. God didn't create that. Man did. I'm not talking about asphalt roads. God didn't create that. Man did. I'm talking about the earth that God created. Look anywhere and you'll find him. That's what he's saying. In this passage, he used birds and wildflowers. He said, look at the wildflowers. They never primp or shop, but have you ever seen color and design quite like it? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. If God gives such attention to the appearance of wildflowers, notice what you just got through hearing. If God gives so much attention, have you ever seen wildflowers in the smallest of details on those flowers? Some of the wildflowers are big, but most of them are small. And you look into, they're so detailed. And God said, if he gives so much attention to these wildflowers, notice what he said right here. Um most of which are never even seen. I love that part because God didn't spare to put them everywhere just because most of humanity would never see them, which means God delights in things that of doing for people that you may never see, that someone else may never see, but he still delights in doing all kinds of things with great detail that you may never know. But when you look back at it through eternity, you'll look back and see, God, you were with me in so many areas that I didn't even recognize. That's just you. It's who you are. And so then he goes on to say, um, don't you think he'll attend to you, take pride in you, do his best for you? In other words, with all that detail that you can see in what he does with flowers, how could you not think that he won't be detailed with you? What I'm trying to get you to do here is to relax to not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. Isn't that interesting? If you're trying to get something, then you're not responding to what God's giving you. If you're trying to get something, then you're not responding to what God's giving you. And if you're trying to get something, you've actually lost sight that God's giving you something when you're trying to get it yourself. Oh, folks, there's perspective here just tons of it that would help us in our life to just slowly make little adjustments and then God becomes the God of the miraculous. Oh, thank God for that. Then he goes on to say, people who don't know God and the way he works fuss over the things, fuss over these things, but you both know God and how he works. This is great. Steep your life in God reality, God initiative, and God provisions. 
So God reality is steep your life in the reality of what's going on in the other world. God initiative is just simply steep your life in God initiating with you and you initiating with him. And then he said, steep your life in God provisions. Do you mean there's all kinds of provisions in my life, maybe that I'm not even aware of? Thank you, that's true, that's very true. And he goes on to say, don't worry about missing out. You'll find your, all your everyday human concerns will be met. And then this is what he says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands for a moment. Father, thank you for what you're doing right now in our lives that you are literally manifesting glory all over us from the front to the back, from the top to the bottom. Thank you, Lord, for literally manifesting glory in our bodies, manifesting glory in our minds, on our job, in our homes, with our marriage, in our families, manifesting God in our relationships. Oh God, I thank you that you're literally before me and behind me and on each side you're walking with me. Thank you for the way that you talk to me and I hear your voice so clearly. Father, thank you that you are manifesting yourself and your glory at all times. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now and don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. We're going to stop right now because that's all we can take. No sense going further and then losing the importance of what's been said. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you when that day comes. How can I live like that? Because God can do all things. And all things are possible to God whom you believe. Do you know the Lord can do things for you when you believe him that are just absolutely amazing? He'll even tweak this world. Like for instance, you just found out about giving and receiving. And you put a great blessing in by the direction of the Lord. The Lord's leading a someone's hand, but you have great need tomorrow. Like God can't go back three weeks from that day and move upon somebody to put what you need in the mail so it gets there tomorrow. I'm telling you, God has all kinds of aces up his sleeves for those who will follow him and believe him, but you have to detach yourself from the flesh and from the world, and let God be God. Come on, in the, in the New King James Version, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added to you. Do you know what? It's amazing as God starts to add things into your life. Let's just do the first thing that really needs to be the first thing. Father, thank you for this time. In your precious name, we put you first in everything we do. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time on Adventures in Grace. Make sure you go to jhmi at jimhockaday.com and send us your grace stories. Until next time.